Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets and I'm back with another video tutorial on C++ programming, especially the object-oriented programming paradigm. So in this video tutorial, we'll be talking about friend function and what exactly is friend function. We'll see some theory about friend function and we'll also see a program. So before we start off with this video tutorial, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there is a lot of video content which is going to come up soon and I'm going to cover a lot of topics. And if you don't know what a function is or what, what are functions in C++, you might want to check out some videos and you can see a video on the top right corner in the terms of cards. And now that you've subscribed to this channel, let's get started. Okay, so in this video, let's first go through a little bit of theory on friend functions. Now, if you've been watching this video tutorials and if you've been watching this entire playlist, we've covered quite a little concepts on object oriented programming till now and we already know that in object oriented programming, the data is secured privately inside the class. So only the member functions of that class can access that data and it has to be via the member functions only. So outside functions cannot access the private data members of a class. So this is something that we already know about object oriented programming when we discussed the theoretical aspect in the first video of object oriented programming. But there might be some situations wherein outside functions need to access the private data. So in that scenarios, friend functions come into picture. So let's read a little bit theory about what friend functions are. So point number one says that a friend function of a class is defined outside that class scope, but it has the right to access all private and protected members of the class. So this is what I just told you that there might be some scenario wherein an outside member or outside function needs to access data of the class directly without using any objects or the member functions actually. So in that scenario, a friend function comes into picture. So let's go through the second point. Now, even though the prototypes for friend function appear in the class definition, friend function are not member functions. So this point will be clear when we go ahead and actually type in the program. And the last point is why do we need friend functions? So as I mentioned, there might be some special case when class pri classes private data needs to be accessed directly without using object of that class. And we also need friend function to perform operator overloading. So just as we overload functions and we've seen function overloading, there is a concept of operator overloading which can be done via friend functions. So now that you know a little bit of basics about what a friend function is and why do we need friend functions? function and what exactly does a friend function do. Let's go ahead and actually see a program so that you'll get a very clear idea about the practical aspect of what a friend function is. So quickly open up your Dave C++ ID and type in the following code. I've already typed the skeleton of the C++ program. You can see I've included the hash include iostream file using namespace and the int main function. So now what we'll do is we'll create a class. So we'll create a simple class named distance. In the private access specifier, we'll declare a data member, let's say int meters. So let's just keep this simple and just create only one data member for now, since we just have to demonstrate the working of a friend function. So let's move on in the public section, we'll create constructor. So we already have talked about what a constructor is. And if you don't know, you can check out this video. You can see on the top right corner, there's a card. So I'll create a default constructor. I'll say meter equals to five. So I'm setting the value of meter equals to zero. If we don't actually set anything, the compiler gives a random value. So when we create an object, the compiler gives a random value to this variable meters. But if we have this default constructor, it will assign zero. Then we'll create a display function. So I'll say void display data. And inside this, we'll just print the value. So I'll say C out meters value and then just print the data members value meters and you can see that inside this function since this display data is a member function of this class we can directly access this member variable or data member so this is what i was talking about in object oriented programming only the functions of the class can directly access its data members because they're private and any outside function say for example if i create a new function over here void display data display data two, and inside this, if I try to print this meters value and print this, it won't allow and it will give you an error. So friend function can be used in order to do that. So now let's create a friend function. So in the theory part, we read that the prototype of the function needs to be included inside the class, but the body has to be outside. So let's create the prototype. We'll say friend void add value. And what we'll do is we'll pass object of the same class as reference. And this is it. This is the basic prototype. And you can notice that I've written a friend keyword. So when we want to declare a friend function, when you have to define a friend function, you have to use the keyword friend to tell the compiler that this function add value is going to be a friend to this class. And the body is going to be outside somewhere over here after the class ends. 
but then the compiler knows that this is a friend function and it can access the values of this class and in this case it is going to access meters. Now you can see inside the round brackets I'm passing the same object with the and sign which means I'm passing it by reference and I'm passing the object of the same class. Now the reason why I'm passing the object of the same class is because I want to access the data member. So that is why I'm passing the object and I'm passing it by reference because if I want to change the value I need to pass it as reference. If I just pass it by value simply it won't change. Now if you don't know what is called by value, called by reference and call by address. I recently created a video addressing all these three different types in which you can pass values to a function. So if you have any queries, you can check this video on the top right corner. You can see a card and it is a very important thing and a lot of students gets confused in this concept. So you might want to check that out first. Okay, so I just have written the function prototype. So this is prototype or it is also known as signature. And here is where the class ends. So after that, let me just cut this out first. Now I'll actually create the function body over here and the definition and exactly what the function is going to do. So here I don't need to type in friend. So I'll just write void add value. Again pass the object by reference. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say d dot meters is equal to d dot meters plus 5. So here what I did is I used the object and I directly accessed its private member. Now since I had to pass the object that's why I have to use the d and dot operator but this add value is an outside function. It is a friend but it is an outside function you can see we've done all the declaration over here. So by default if it is it was not a friend then there should have been an error. But since we have said that it is a friend so the value that is d dot meters is directly going to be accessed over here and we have said that we are going to add phi to that value. So let's see if this works let's try to save this first. So I just saved it as friend function 2.cpp. Now inside the main function, we still have to create the object. What I'll do is I'll say distance d1. And when I say distance d1, the default constructor is called and the value is going to be 0 for meters. Okay, so I just made a typo over here. I have to type in s. And then what we'll do is we'll say d1 dot display data. So I'm going to call this function, which will print out the value of meters. So initially when it is created, it will print 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this function add value. So here I'll say add value and I'm going to pass this d1 and this is going to be passed by reference. And also this is the friend function call. And lastly, again, what I'll do is I'll say d1 dot display data. So essentially what is happening is when we created d1 meters value is going to be zero initially because the default constructor is going to be called over here. Then I'm just printing it out. So the value zero should be visible. Then what I'm doing is I'm calling our friend function and passing by reference the object that we just created d1. So this function is going to be called. This is our friend function. What is happening is the meters value inside this object d1 is going to be incremented by phi. And later on when I say display data, the value should be printed as phi. So let's see if this works. Let me just save this and go to execute and compile. And I'll say compile and run. So there you go guys, you can see that the first time meters value is zero and later on the meters value is five, which means our program ran successfully and just, I just had to print the escape sequence. I'll say C out and L two times. Let me just save this. And if I again compile and run, you can see the first time meters value is zero and the second time meters value is five, which means that our friend function is working fine. And you can see that this add value function we called without using object. So we did not have to say d1 dot add value because this add value is an independent function which is outside the class. So it does not require an object to call it. But since it is a friend, we've said it inside the class, it is a friend to this class, it can directly access the data members of the class. So you can see we've accessed meters, which is a private data member of this class distance. So we've directly accessed it and we also added value to it. So in general object oriented principles, this should not happen because that is the principle of object oriented programming that directly outside functions cannot access the private data members of a class. But as I mentioned, there might be some special case wherein you want to access the private data members using outside functions without using objects and we also want to perform operator overloading. So in that case a friend function comes into picture and that's when friend functions are used. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood what are friend functions. We saw some theory about friend functions and why do we need them and we also read and learned what exactly they are doing. And then lastly we saw a practical program wherein I demonstrated the working of friend function how it is manipulating the private data members inside a class.
So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Peace.